know New York is the Big Apple. New Orleans, the Big Easy. Chicago, the Windy City. And Las Vegas, Sin City. But did you know Houston is known as Space City? It all began almost six decades ago when NASA decided to open the Manned Spacecraft Center there, putting Houston on the map. In a state where size matters, Houston is the top dog of Texas, the biggest city with the busiest port in the nation. Its skyscrapers reach for the heavens, boasting an identity built on trying to get us there. How much did the culture of NASA seep into the framework, so to speak, of the city itself? I think it's huge. Pulitzer Prize winner Alex Stuckey joined the Houston Chronicle to cover Mission Moon. You can look everywhere and there's space stuff. I mean, there's space murals everywhere. There's even a moonwalking cow at Bush Intercontinental Airport. And not one, even better. but two Four. celestially inspired sports teams, the Astros and the Rockets. Houston is among the first words uttered in outer space. Historian Douglas Brinkley wrote American Moonshot. I mean, NASA looks at Houston as the Vatican of space. But the Vatican of space had very humble beginnings, according to Rice University professor Melissa Keene. Houston began its life as a muddy, swampy, mosquito-infested, yellow fever trap. Keene pulled photos from her archives of Houston at the turn of the 20th century. This is what will become the Ship Channel later, Buffalo Bayou. <laughs> was the locus of the growth of the city. But it started off as essentially a big, wide creek. City leaders envisioned expanding that creek into a 25-mile-long shipping lane from the Gulf Coast port of Galveston, which was leveled by the nation's deadliest natural disaster in 1900. And the Houston leadership took advantage of this to do this audacious uh, construction project. So without this, you wouldn't have had the infrastructure for NASA to be here. That's right. NASA was looking for the right stuff. A city with elite universities to support research and training, a modern airport, and a warm climate for working outdoors year round. By 1960, Houston had it all, plus some good old boy politicians to boot. You had to have political clout. And Houston had it in abundance. In abundance. Next month, We'll have a leadership in space, which you wouldn't have without Albert Thomas. And so will this city. Congressman Albert Thomas controlled NASA's budget as chair of the House Appropriations Subcommittee. Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson was also on board. And construction magnate George R. Brown. Kennedy barely won Houston in 1960. He would need to win it in 1964. And pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into Houston was good new frontier politics. NASA announced that the Manned Space Center was going to be located in Houston on September 19, 1961. And every newspaper in town, the front page was covered. We're Space City. We are now fighting the Russians huh. from Houston. It was spectacular. A year later, President Kennedy was at Rice, teeing up the mission. We choose to go to the moon. In this and all of a sudden, we felt like a young and vibrant and important place. We're building satellites. Our experiments are going up in space. Rice University was all in, too, donating land on the outskirts of the city for NASA's Manned Space Center and the people who work there. Three years later, there's a small city there. And what you can't see in this picture is all around it, residential areas begin springing up like mushrooms. Which became home to the Mercury and Apollo astronauts, including the soon to be firsts, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. It was an oil and gas town, it was petroleum. Once NASA comes to Houston, everything changes. Every business wants to be part of this moon energy. Nowhere more boldly than baseball's newest treasure, the Astrodome, the world's first multi-purpose dome stadium built by the team who'd already swapped out their old Colt 45's moniker. It's here the Apollo 11 crew were welcomed back to their official hometown homecoming, 
hosted by Frank Sinatra himself. I know I speak for all Americans. Fifty years after the Eagle landed, NASA hopes to return. This time is a jumping off point to go even further into our solar system. People around my age, they want to go to Mars. I've interviewed so many people that have said, I'm not getting married, I'm not having kids because I want to go to Mars. What sparks that kind of curiosity? There's a little bit of wanting to be the first, I am confident. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. which is what we had in the 60s. The 60s, Douglas Brinkley says, was a time of monumental change. Change personified in a single American city that dared to dream big. This may be the age of Neil Armstrong we're living in right now. I mean, that's how large breaking Earth's gravitational pull is. So years from now, Houston may be seen as the great American city where first time Earthlings from Houston were able to project to the solar system and beyond. 